Welcome back to Fix This Build That. I'm Brad, and today we're gonna be building a totally tricked out mobile miter saw stand. I built my original miter saw stand and I've been selling plans for it since 2015. Before my YouTube, when I was just a baby-faced blogger. Hello! Now, ever since then, I've had folks asking for a video, so this has been a long time coming. Now, back when I made the design, I wanted to use the folding wing concept that I'd seen my friend April Wilkerson and others use. But I wanted to add a lot of bells and whistles to my design, like adjustable side wings, a movable fence with stop blocks, and onboard dust collection to really trick it out. Now, April recently released a video on her build, so make sure you go check that out. I'll link below to it. Now the whole stand is made from a little over one and a half sheets of three quarter inch plywood. After breaking down the sheets outside, I started cutting the parts for the cabinet, which include two sides and three shelves. I found labeling the parts that you'll get from each section of plywood is a great way to avoid having to buy another sheet due to an errant cut. I also started drawing an arrow towards the freshly cut side as well. Now the factory edges of plywood tend to be pretty square, but they're also pretty rough. So I like to use the factory edge against my table saw fence and cut the part slightly oversized. Then I flip it around so that the smooth edge I just cut is against the fence, and I make another smooth cut on the other side to get it to final size. Now it's a bit of extra work, but it's gonna make joinery a lot tighter later on. The shelves are joined to the sides with pocket screws, so I pulled out my Craig Foreman that I just installed on the flip top stand a few weeks ago. I have plans available for this miner saw stand as well as the flip top cart. Now these are my two most popular shop project plans, and I've made a bundle for you to get them together at a discount. I'll have a link below in the description for the bundle if you want to go check it out. I clamped the bottom to the sides and I attached it with pocket screws after aligning everything in place. And immediately after that, I removed it after realizing I should have started with the top shelf and worked down. Which is pretty comical since the plans that I just referenced specifically say to start with the top. Apparently I'm a good plan maker, but a bad plan follower. So after righting my wrong, I attached the top shelf down a bit from the top edge of the sides. Then I used a couple of spacers to reference the middle shelf to the top and secured it there as well. And this middle shelf is for holding off cuts or parts as you cut them on the saw. And I've really enjoyed having it there as opposed to a drawer that would just collect a bunch of junk. Now I finished up by reattaching the bottom, though it went much faster with all the screws queued up for me already. To hold the cabinet square and to give it a lot of rigidity, I cut a full size back panel for it. I squared up the cabinet with the back piece and I tacked it in place with some brad nails. And then I went back and I secured it with countersunk screws around the perimeter. Now before moving on to the wing supports, I set the cabinet on the floor to drill holes for the dust collection setup. I drilled two holes in the back, one smaller one for power cords and a larger one which will let the dust hose pass through. Then I rounded over the edges of the holes as well as the outer edges of the cabinet with a roundover bit. That's a small detail, but it makes the cart feel nice and smooth when you're moving around the shop, which can be easily done with the three inch casters I'm installing here. And next I moved on to the folding side wing supports. Now these are triangular parts cut from a larger piece and they're gonna hold the side wings when extended. I laid out a diagonal line to cut the small sheet into two equal parts. And this is the perfect spot to use a track saw since clamping a straight edge down at an angle can be kind of tricky. But if you don't have a track saw, just elevate the part on some 2x4s and then you should be able to clamp a straight edge down from underneath. Now I used the bench dogs to hold the parts at 90 degrees to the track and I cut off the bottom pointed end of each support and this is just for aesthetics. And yes, I realized that I cut into my bench top and it's meant to be used that way, it's a sacrificial top. But thank you for your concerned comments every time I do this. Now the triangles that I just cut will attach to the cabinet and small risers will extend up to support the side wings. I cut a couple small blocks on my table saw and then I drilled holes down the middle of them for adjustment screws that I'm going to be installing later. Now you can do this with a hand drill too, just try and be as straight as possible because there's going to be a screw going down through this hole. Now the holes are for threaded inserts and you just hammer these into the top. And there's lots of different types of inserts but this is the one that I used. And this is going to let you install a quarter 20 inch bolt and that will hold the side wings. Now the threads are going to allow for adjustment up and down so that you can get those wings perfectly level. I laid out the wing supports on my bench and I attached the risers with glue and screws. And just make sure that you have the triangles laid out like I do here in a mirror image. If you install the riser on the same spot of each triangle, it won't fold up right later. I hit everything with a roundover, which is going to be a common theme in this build, and then I grabbed the piano hinge to prep for install. Each triangular wing is attached with a section of piano hinge. I cut the pieces out of a larger hinge with a sawzall, but a hacksaw will work great for this too. 
I installed the hinges on the long edge of the supports. They're on the opposite side of the riser blocks. Now, using a self-centering bit works great for installing these, and I'll have links below to this bit as well as my countersink bit and all the other tools and accessories that I used on the build. And next I built the side wings that the supports are going to be holding. I ripped down the parts for the sides which are made up of a top piece with a small frame underneath for some extra strength. I cut the frame parts to width and then I pulled out old Fred to help me with the cross cuts. I was going to use the miter saw with my repeatable stop blocks, but I figured using the project I'm building to make the project I'm building would be kind of cheating and a little bit too meta for me. Now to get the short frame parts sized perfectly, I used the top panel to set the stop block on my sled. Then I put two pieces of ply against the block to represent the front and back frame parts. Now this is an easy way to size the frame exactly to the top without measuring. Now assembling the side wings is pretty straightforward. I'm using screws, pre-drilled, countersunk, and meticulously measured and spaced. Now, I was going to hide the screws and use pocket holes, but I figured this was a good nod to my perfectionist tendencies, and every time I see these screws lined up, it'll itch that little spot for me. And one thing I wanted to add to the side wings was some finger holds. I always pull the wing up by the fence, and then I slid my hand underneath to lift it. A little cutout for my hand would make this a lot easier. I laid out a little recess on the lower part of the frame, and then I cut it out with my jigsaw. And I'm sure you've all heard the old grind it till you find it when you're driving a stick shift. Well, I think I found the jigsaw equivalent. Just burn it till you turn it. This thing was smoking like crazy. But I got it done and I rounded over the edges of the side wings and then I cut two more pieces of the piano hinge to size for both of those wings. Now these hinges get installed on the inside of the frame. And although it looks a little weird right now, you'll see how it meshes up with a cleat to fold properly. Now these small cleats get attached to the cabinet flush with the top edge. They get pre-drilled and countersunk with screws just like everything else. And now I could get over to assembly. Now the easiest way to attach the triangular supports is to lay the cabinet face down on the floor on top of some plywood offcuts. The risers on the outside of the supports are going to hold it up level with the offcuts and that's going to let that whole piece be flush with the front face. Now after aligning the support and making sure it was at 90 degrees to the cabinet, I pre-drilled and attached the screws. I like to secure the ends in the center first and then go back and fill in the rest of the screws. It just makes it a lot easier to make sure it's not moving as you're working down. After that, I raised the cabinet back up and this thing was really starting to take shape. I installed the quarter 20 bolts along with a wing nut and a lock washer into the threaded inserts to help with the next step. The height of the bolt should be even with the top of the cabinet to start. To put the side wings on, I could rest it on the cleat and clamp it in place while resting the other end on the bolt. Now before we attach this permanently, I set the bolt in the middle of the double support that was installed on the underside of the side wing, and I marked the position from underneath with a pencil. Then I removed the wing and I drilled a recess on the underside right at this spot that I would marked. And this provides a hard stop for the bolt head, and it makes sure that the sides won't fall down unexpectedly if the triangular supports get bumped. Now, attaching the side wings is pretty easy after that. You just line up the cleat and clamp it in place like before, putting the bolt in that recess stop that we just made. And then I drilled and attached the piano hinges. You're going to need to adjust the bolts up a little bit afterwards to adjust for that little recess that we just put in and to level the wings. And this system works out really well. My favorite part is how it folds down flat and it nests nicely when it's put away. I repeated the process on the other side wing and I was ready to bring this all over and get things level. I'm using a 12 inch fixed miter saw here and it has one of the widest bases of the saws that I've seen. So most saws should fit in this setup, but the plans can always be adjusted to fit bigger saws if needed. The top shelf is positioned so that the saw is lower than the side wings when it's first set in place. Now this way you can raise up your specific saw and it doesn't really matter how tall that is as long as it's under 4 inches. To raise it up level I cut some custom shims and then you can secure the saw with screws through the shims into the top or drill out holes and use quick release knobs and bolts like I did. Now the last parts to the build are the custom fences for the stop blocks. Now these are just two strips of plywood, one for the base and one for the front face. I cut the parts to size and another upgrade that I wanted to add to the build was a sawdust recess. I put a sacrificial fence on my table saw and I ran the front faces of the fence over the blade. And this leaves a little recess right at the bottom so that sawdust can just scoot under there and not get pinched between the workpiece and the fence that might throw off your cut. I also wanted the fence to be adjustable front to back if I ever needed to move it. You can just screw the fence down in place, but I like the option of easy removal or quick adjustments. Now I laid out two slots on each of the base parts to let the fence slide back and forth. 
I routed them out with a quarter inch router bit, and this really should be done with a plunge router, not a fixed one like I'm using. I kind of butchered it a bit trying to tilt that router in there and take some shallow passes. But either way, just use caution and a straight edge and take your time. Now assembly is really basic. I just used countersunk holes along the bottom edge of the front face. The key here is that the fence is square, or at worst, it's slightly tilting back. You don't want it to be tilting forward because that'll mess up your measurements as you're going with different thicknesses of boards. To mount the fences, I set them on the wings and I leveled them up with the fence on my saw. And then I marked the center of the slot with a quarter inch drill bit and drilled through the side wing with a 5 16th inch bit. I'm using a fender washer, lock washer, and a flat washer along with a knob to lock these down just like I did for the saw. And to upgrade the fence for some quick and easy cuts, I'm installing a Craig top track and a stop block. I'm using four foot strips that I cut down to size on my metal saw. You can also cut these with a regular miter saw as long as you have the right blade on there. I pre-drilled and secured the track to the top of the fence, and then I installed some measuring tape into the slots, and that pairs up nicely with the production stop or the swing stop. Now, these fence upgrades are really awesome, and they're gonna make repeatable cuts a breeze. All right, the last thing to do is install the dust collection. And before I put it all in there, I wanted to have it out so you could get a good look at it before install. I used to have the 12 gallon vacuum. What I wanna do is switch to this four gallon vacuum with the dust separator on it. The big reason there is I just won't have to empty any of the bags anymore. I can just go straight to the cyclone. So here's how it works. It's all connected together. Let me show you. The vacuum and tool go into the yellow box. The box is plugged into the wall and then the vacuum gets plugged into the yellow box as well as the tool power. So this is the relay. Once the switch is turned on here, once the saw is running, the vacuum will turn on. All right, I got everything in here and installed with the relay, the vacuum, and the cyclone. There's way too much hosing, I know that, and I'm gonna to try to, to shorten that and see if that'll help the suction, but I'm gonna go with it and see what happens. Maybe I'll switch back to the other one later, but I really like the idea of having this cyclone so I can just empty that easily and not have to worry about buying bags anymore. Now this miter saw stand has been one of the cornerstones in my shop and it's made my work so much easier. The dust collection isn't perfect, but it captures a lot more than just a bag, and I plan to upgrade it in the future with a full hood. If you want to build your own, be sure to go to the link in the description to check out the plans. Hey, before you go, if you want to check out some more shop projects, I got a playlist queued up for you right there. I think you're going to love them. If you want to get the plans for this build and get the bundle with the flip top cart, there's a link right down there. Check it out. I think you're going to enjoy both of them. Until next time, get out there and build something awesome.